The surface of the land is not uniform in height or appearance over large areas. Mountains, plateaus and plains are the major landforms on the continents. Landforms not only vary in size and shape from place to place, they also change with the passage of time. Sudden changes are brought about by earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and floods. Gradual changes take place continuously and affect large areas. Mountains Mountains of the world, for example the Himalayas, were largely a source of securing rainfall and rivers. Extreme cold, lack of vegetation made them sparsely populated. They did not allow agriculture as there was lack of cultivable soil and transport facilities. The major mountains of the world, the Alps in Europe, the Rockies in North America and the Himalayas in Asia, abounded in snow, glaciers and deep gorges. Above a certain height, no vegetation was available. Their forests and scenic beauty were a source of attraction for tourists. But now, man is using mountains as a resource. Horticulture is being practiced successfully on the slopes and the valleys are intensely irrigated and cultivated. More money is spent on roads and difficulty in transportation is reduced. Several hydropower projects have been developed from the waters of the snow-fed perennial rivers. Scandinavian countries of Europe and Japan in Asia have solved their difficulties by developing cheap power. The mineral wealth of less rugged coal mountains is being exploited. Plateaus They create a different terrain. They are rich in lava and make the soil fertile. Some of the old plateaus are rich in minerals. The rivers have rapids and this has allowed development of hydroelectricity. The Europeans started plantation agriculture and the benefits are still being enjoyed by plateau dwellers in India, East Africa and Brazil. Plains They have the benefit of rich alluvial soil brought by the rivers, for example, the Amazon Basin and the Gangetic Plain. They have high density of population, easy means of communication and transport. Cheap labor is available as are raw materials and a big consumer market. There are areas of extensive agriculture in the world and nearly two-thirds of the world population lives here. Rivers are navigable and railways allow industries to grow. Prairies of Canada have greatly flourished due to the development of roads and railways. The same has happened even in Siberia. But the extent to which the land can be used depends on the demands made on it. Proper planning of land use with reference to the nature of land and the need of people will provide maximum results. Improper use of land such as clearance of forest for cultivation may lead to soil erosion. Thus, we see that several factors influence the land use pattern of a country or a region at a given time. Fertile plains are used for growth of crops, occurrence of minerals leads to mining. Economic and human factors also have great influence. For example, if the ore is of a low quality, then its mining may not be carried out due to the high cost. Sometimes, due to human requirements of highly populated areas, forest lands are depleted for buildings, houses, rails, etc. India has a very high percentage of arable land and Australia has the highest percentage of pasture land. So agriculture is the chief occupation in India while sheep rearing is in Australia. But India's forest cover is low. It is desirable to have one-third of the total land area under forests to maintain a healthy environment. Japan has 67% of its land area under forests. Canada has the highest percentage of its land, 52% under other uses. 
extremely cold climate and prairies in the southern part makes it impossible to grow crops or put a larger area under crops. The UK and USA are highly urbanized countries and they have less land area under crops. It is necessary to properly plan the use of land. Best results can be obtained if the nature of the land and the needs of the community are kept in view. Carelessness in planning can lead to serious problems like shortage of crop lands, soil erosion and desertification. Planned land use will speed up development, prevent land degradation, help build modern cities with more land resources. Land is a very important natural resource as all human beings live on it and obtain most of their needs from it. Man has used land for his needs in various ways. Constructing buildings, roads, railway lines, cultivation, rearing of animals, mining, industries, etc. The use of land has never been in the same proportion even in one region, leave aside nations. It has varied from region to region and from time to time. Land provides 95% of the human requirements for food, a greater part of clothing, housing and wood for both fuel and construction. But land covers only 30% of the total area of the earth's surface. All parts of even this percentage of land are not habitable. About 90% of the world's population occupy only 30% of its land area. The rest of the land, about 70%, is either very thinly populated, 10% only, or uninhabited. This is because of the nature of the land or the climate. The land is either too rocky or a desert and the climate is extremely hot or extremely cold or too wet. Soil Resources The surface of the earth is covered with soil. Soil is a combination of small rock fragments and organic material. Agriculture is totally dependent on soil. The thin layer of topsoil is crucial for growth of plants. The uppermost layer of the earth's crust which is loose, is in fragments and is useful to plants is called soil. It consists of both inorganic and organic substances. Factors of Soil Formation A number of factors contribute to the formation of soil and its fertility. The most important of them are rocks, climate, plants and animals. The rocks on which soils are formed disintegrate and decompose under the process of weathering and decomposition. The original rock or the parent rock provides the basic material and the type and quality of a rock depend on its parent rock. Climate determines the rate of weathering and erosion. If there is more moisture or there is greater fluctuation in temperature, then the rate of weathering will be greater. The remains of dead plants and animals provide organic matter which decomposes. It is known as humus. It gets mixed up with the soil and forms an essential part of it. The slope of the land also decides the accumulation of soils. Time is a very big factor in the formation of soils. It takes several years to form soil. The soil layers will be deeper and thicker if longer time is taken for their formation. Agents of erosion also decide the formation of soil. In equatorial region, there is less light as there is a thick cloud cover in these regions. Weathering takes a longer period. Agents of erosion and degradation of soil Wind, water and glaciers act as agents of erosion. They result in degradation of soil. They erode soil and deposit it elsewhere. Rivers deposit sediments and make the soil alluvial. For example, 
the Gangetic Valley of India has rich fertile soils due to rivers. The wind deposits soil from one place to another. Physical factors that contribute to soil erosion and its degradation are slope of the land, velocity of the wind and the rate of rainfall. Human factors are deforestation, overgrazing, overuse by adding chemical fertilizers to the land and over irrigation. In India, 36% of its total irrigated area has been damaged by salination. Soil Conservation Soil is our prime natural and economic resource because we derive everything that we need from soil. It is the soil that provides food for both men and animals. The soil gives us cereals like wheat, rice, millets, etc. It also provides us oil seeds, pulses, beverages like tea and coffee, etc. It gives us both primary and secondary food products. Primary food products are the cereals, fruits and vegetables which we get directly from the soil. We also get meat, eggs, honey, wool, lac, etc. indirectly from the soil. These are obtained from the cattle and insects that depend on soil for their food. We make clothes from the fibers given by the soil. In short, it is the basic resource. So we see that soil gives us primary as well as secondary food products. We make clothes from the fibers grown in soil. It supplies us material for building houses. It gives us minerals for the development of industry. In short, soil is the most important natural and basic resource for the development of our country's wealth. Soil erosion has made millions of hectares of land unproductive in several areas of the world. It is vital that great care is taken to conserve, protect, renew and maintain soil fertility. The governments of most of the countries have taken remedial measures to prevent soil erosion. Some of the measures are as follows. Contour Plowing by this method, the fields are ploughed, harrowed and sown along the natural contours of the hills instead of up and down the slopes. This prevents the rainwater from flowing down the hill. It stands in the level furrows and soaks into the ground so the plants receive more water. This is suitable for afforestation and grassland development. Terracing By this method, a series of wide steps are made along the slope following the contours. This method is very common in Asian countries in regions of rice cultivation. Strip Cropping In this method, cover crops such as grasses and small grains are planted alternatively with cultivated crops. These cover crops absorb the moisture and hold the surface soil together. Plugging of gullies. This is done by building stone dams or fixing wire netting or planting trees across gullies. These measures check the flood water and so cause filling of silt in the gullies. Planting of shelter bells. This measure is adopted in the case of wind erosion. Bells of trees and shrubs are planted to check the velocity of the wind and this stops soil movement. Cover planting or cropping In areas such as plantations, cover crops are planted between the young trees. Leguminous crops are often used because they add nitrogen to the soil and check soil erosion. One example is the Japanese legume kudzu. Other methods which the farmers have been using for centuries are fallowing. This allows the much used land to rest or lie fallow so that it regains fertility. Crop rotation. This is followed to grow different crops on the same land. 
This prevents the crops from exhausting one kind of mineral nutrient in the soil. For example, potatoes require much potash, but wheat requires nitrates. Thus, it is best to alternate crops in the fields. Use of fertilizers is another way of soil conservation. Farmers all over the world are now using chemical fertilizers along with organic manures. Fertilizers are easier to use and help enormously in growth of agriculture. Another way of soil conservation is water management. By regulating the amount of water in the soil, aeration can be improved and crop yields can be increased.